You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Andrew Ganaic and Justin Goddard. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. My name is Andrew Ganaic, and alongside me is my co-host, Justin Goddard. Thanks for joining us on the fourth episode of our off-season position review. Tonight we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. Well, not, maybe not exactly, but a good transition over to the offensive line. Um, we're gonna. If you haven't checked out our two previous pods, please go ahead and do so. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify by searching The Wandering Buffalo Podcast and on most social media platforms. Uh, we had a very special guest on last week, Kate. Really awesome girl pretty pretty fun episode so if you haven't done that please go back and to listen to that podcast it was really really special um so before we uh get into tonight's agenda justin how are you doing tonight i am delightful uh a little bit sore from some recording we did for a future episode here but feeling pretty good tonight yeah that future recording is going to be quite the treat um tons of laughing in that one i'm excited right, for so- it yeah, so let's uh, let's break down the episode for the people. We're gonna do some Bills-related news. Um, there's a lot of them, a lot of news for, in regards to, you know, people that got sh- shaken loose by getting cut. So we can't cover them all, but we're gonna cover you know just a, a couple for today's purposes. Uh, then we're gonna do our new segment of a standout social media post that we think is funny. Then we'll jump into our 2020 performance player uh review by player on the offensive line talk about some free agents justin's got some draft prospects that he needs to tell us about and then we'll uh, preview our episode for next week so some bills related news uh the bills will roll over 5.8 million dollars from last year's cap it's not a lot but it's something justin what do you see us doing with that uh it's gonna be a crazy time we'll see kind of got to wait and see how it shakes out um also the the final cap number still hasn't been given so it might be a little bit more than that um but i mean i think there's still going to be some cuts that are are going to be some pretty key pieces um we'll have to stay tuned and see what happens um along the lines of the cap i will say micah hyde just got extended Yes, he did. Love that move. Love Micah Hyde. Love Jordan Poyer. Love them together. Um, and honestly, for their production, they're grossly underpaid for that tandem. And I am all oh, yeah. about that. Yeah, and you know, it. I thought it was interesting that they didn't target his salary cap to be altered this year. You know, they they it's basically unchanged for this season so it seems like they they feel confident that they could restructure maybe some other contracts or maybe uh you know they're gonna cut some people that maybe we had our uh fingers on uh for the next couple of weeks so i'm definitely interested to see what's going on there in other news minnesota released their tight end uh kyle rudolph justin do we want this guy here do we not uh he's kind of like the perfect guy of what I would like to see them bring in if we were going to bring in another tight end. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of to the point where I go back and forth on this a lot, and I don't want to be a flip-flopper, um, but I kind of want to stick with Dawson Knox, and I think if if you're adding a tight end like Kyle Rudolph, you're kind of putting him into the, the tight end one slot, and if you're putting him in the tight end two slot, I think he's – he might be a little bit on the lower end of the money, but I think he's still more than you want to spend on that spot. Um, I got a couple guys in mind. I'll I'll hold off on that until we do the tight end episode next week. But okay. I think we I think there's a little bit more value out there than uh, than Kyle Rudolph right now. But love the player, proven production, all around tight end. Um, yeah. But like I said, I think I got somebody else in mind for a value pick there. Yeah, you know, if uh, the Bills did get him in the building, I'm not going to be upset about that. But you know who I will be upset if the Bills get in the building? Jets recently released Henry Anderson. I hate this guy. He's dirty. He basically ruined Stephen Hoshka's, like, last good year 
I, I don't want him here, Justin. I know you don't want him here. No. Do you have anything you want to say I, about this I before we move on to the next people? I don't want a guy like that in the league in general. Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> it's a it's a violent game as it is. You don't need the extra cheap shots. Yeah, definitely not. That's ended that's up with us getting weak. Tyler Bass, so we could attempt field goals from beyond fifty. But yeah, um, silver linings. You know, right on Friday, the Bills brought in ex Carolina punter. Michael Pellaridi? Pellaridi? I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Sorry about that, Michael. But that's interesting. Uh, is that like Rutro to Boho, Jordan? Uh, I don't I don't think so. Um, I think it's kind of maybe an insurance policy type of let's see what's out there. Um, because Bojo's not under contract right now. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, the guy... Well, first of all, he barely qualified for um, any of the season-long averages because we punted so little. So maybe it's something Bean's looking at that, you know, if if we're not punting that much, do we need to tie up money in that position? Um, as soon as I saw ex-Carolina Panther. <laughs> right. I don't know. I was, like, um, I was like, oh, my God, another one? But I no mean, way. Bojo averaged... 50, 51 yards for the season on punts, as long as 72. Right. I don't know. And I feel like Bojo was so back and forth in the beginning. I don't want to. I don't want to let him go now. We stole him from the Patriots. It's a great story. True. Um. My the only caveat that I have with bringing someone like Michael Pallaridi in is creating competition, which I'm all about. Moving on, the Bills put in a rule to be voted on for the league, uh, I guess the owners meeting, where no interviewing will happen until after championship Sundays and no hiring will be made until after the Super Bowl. I love this rule. I'm not saying that the Bills lost in the AFC championship game because the, you know, the offensive and defensive coordinators minds were somewhere else, but I don't want to as a fan, I don't want to have to worry about next season when I should be worried about what's happening on Sunday, next Sunday. You know, so that's where I stand as a fan. Justin, how do you feel about this rule? Uh, I feel about the same. Uh, to me, it's kind of silly that it's something that's still in place. Um, when you have teams that are making deep playoff runs, the the coordinators, the assistants, all that, they're always hot names for the next job. And, you know, it's already a long season. Wait, I, I just don't really understand the difference in two, three weeks longer before you can talk to them about a job. Um, I know when there's a head coach vacancy, they're trying to fill it and they're trying to start moving on. But mm-hmm. let them finish out the season. Let them stay focused on what they're doing. There's already enough media on that talking about their names being in the running. There's no reason to be doing a two-hour interview. I mean... This this year with COVID and everything, it was like Zoom meetings and stuff for interviews. In a regular year, they might be flying out to a facility on a Tuesday of championship week to go interview for the next job. I, I don't understand why that's a thing. I love the, the rule put in there to be right. voted on at least. All right. Well, I think that does it for this week's uh, Bills-related news. Uh, now we're going to move into our newest segment the weak social media standout. I'm not going to use this person's name here, but, you know, we all saw this post here at the Wandering Buffalo podcast, and we just got a little giggle, so maybe you will too. This individual posted on a a well-known social media group where a lot of us Bills Mafia come together and stated, you know, hey, Mafia, I understand that you're worried about Milano leaving him free agency but here's the bill's insurance policy tyrell dodson he's larger faster and he can cover pretty well too so don't worry trust the podcast the first comment on that social media post who's your dealer (laughs) the the original guy who made the post replied to that replied to that comment and said God. <laughs> the big man upstairs. I love that. I I love I love that comment so much. 
so funny. And and listen, uh, Tyrell Dodson, he showed a little bit last year, but you know, the these coaches are are in the room with these guys every day. If he was that much better than Milano, he would have been playing every Sunday. You know, maybe it's something that you can dispatch him with some other players and you can make up for Milano and you know there's not a serious drop off but there's a reason that Milano's probably walking this year and probably going to sign a contract for 14 a year. The guy's a good player. So right. Still still a very funny comment. That, maybe maybe he knows something about Tyrell that we don't. So or who knows? Maybe the socials are a real weird place in the world. Right. I, I love it. The internet is, stays undefeated. Um, let's transition over to, to the offensive line room. Justin, these guys are mountains. They're huge. I always look at these guys. Uh, it's, you know, everyone goes like, oh, you know, you think that they're like regular sized people, but when up close, they're huge. And that's, I, I know it, it's true. I used to work for the medical imaging facility directly partnered with the Buffalo Bills and Sabres. I was doing an internship there. I can't say this offensive tackle's name for HIPAA reasons, but I'm not lying to you. He he had to, like, duck through the hallways. I'm surprised that he fit into our MRI machine. This guy was so big and i i was i honestly was astonished by looking how large he was he was like a mountain a moving mountain like i under i don't even know like they're 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 just big people in general so i sorry i had to get my rant yeah i don't i don't have the hippo laws in place so i can't say at, at a former employer i ran into a few bills players um some some of them are the other way where i'm kind of astonished that they look like such normal guys um, the one that comes to mind for me is Josh Reed, um, might be a little bit before your time as a receiver, but he walked through the door and it, if I wasn't a Bills fan, I would have never recognized this guy. And then on the flip side of that, um, I had both Paul Puzlesny and John McCargo come in. Uh, John McCargo was a former first round pick. Uh, you love that guy, right? Different, no. <laughs> You know, um, we'll, we'll transition over to the offensive line real quick. Huge. But I, another wide receiver that I saw in person was Victor Cruz. Uh, you know, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. This is like right after he won the Super Bowl, so I, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. He just beat the Patriots. I saw him in an ice cream shore, uh, shop in New York City, and he we're the same height. We're like quite literally the same height, and for some reason I thought he was gonna be a giant, but same size. Anyways, um. Let's get into some quick stats. In general, ESPN has the Buffalo ranked Buffalo Bills offensive ranked the following. They're fourth in pass uh, pass block win rate, so that's 64%. But they're 29th in run block win rate, 69%. You want to know who's at 30th? The Jets at 67. And that line is bad, like real bad. <laughs> so going back, you know, to our second episode i want to say this might be the reason why we didn't run the ball that well and why i really don't think the bills are gonna you know take a off uh a running back with their 30th pick i sure hope not yeah let's start things off with the snowman Dion dawkins pff ranks him at 78.1 i i know we're not the biggest fans of pff because they they felt some way about Josh Allen coming out, but there's they were the only free stats that I could get with all across the board. So I, I just went with them. So 78.1, is that good? Well, Trent Williams of the 49ers, 49ers sorry, is the highest at 91.9. It's a big discrepancy, but that doesn't mean that he's not good. He's Trent Williams allegedly is number one, and when you see Trent Williams tapes, you, you can understand why he is. I love Deion Dawkins' letters to Bill's Mafia. It speaks out to, you know, who he is as a person. Um, I love his grit in the AFC Championship game. He was, he, he when he saw Josh Allen in trouble, I, Feliciano came over, and then, boom, Deion comes through with the hammer. I love that. 
he, he and he's also developed a lot as a leader right he's got that captain symbol on his chest he's developed into a fine football player and a better person in my opinion and in terms of his contract the bills have a decision to make uh, i think i think that they could like convert some of his like yearly salary into a signing bonus and then his contract balloons in the later life i don't know if they already done that but maybe it's something they would like to consider but all around when it comes to Deion dawkins i love the man i want him here justin tell me how you feel about him everybody loves the snow man let's go um as far as him as a player um i wouldn't put him in like any sort of elite left tackle category no disrespect snow man please don't come find me i love you um but I'd say he's above average. Um, the the offensive line play in general around the league is it's kind of like the the starting quarterback where teams are all looking for these guys. And you know, I don't think I don't think you have to have five Pro Bowlers across your offensive line. I think you know three, four above average players, and then you can get a guy, get away with a guy in there. Um, also, from our starting five last year, uh, he's the only one that I'm really quite certain is going to be there. Um, we got some contracts up. We got some players that kind of outplayed their contracts. I love me some snowman. I don't want him going anywhere. I'll see you next year, buddy. Yeah. All right, let's go to the other side with the right tackle, Daryl Williams. PFF ranked him at a 79.4. Is that good? Well, Lane Johnson of the Eagles is ranked 71.9, and he's damn good in my opinion. He's not like, according to PFF, he's not ranked up like in the top three, but in my opinion, that's that's pretty good. You know what Daryl Williams reminds me of, Justin? It reminds me of like when you go into a supermarket and you see like a steak that's, you know, the manager special deal, like buy it today for like $3 cheaper and you buy it and you make it that night and you feel super good about it. And you're like, oh my God, I'm a genius. Spent $3 less than the rest, the rest of these fools who bought the, you know, one that w would last like two days later. I'm just buying this now for this week. I feel like that's how Brandon Bean looked at this. He's like, yep, value deal. I'm taking it. And you, and you know what? To quote Brandon Bean again. He's earned the right to test free agency. If he does get a, you know, a $9 million contract or whatever, I don't know if he'll live up to it the way that he lived up to this 2.5 because that was great value. You got We got a really good return on investment. You give the guy $9 million, there's no way he's going to give that same return on investment. But he, if he performs the way he did, it will be fine in my opinion. It would just be like you're paying a normal price of meat at that point, and you don't get that value deal. Got a regular price steak. Yeah. So Justin, he's a free agent. We resign him, let him go. Spot track says two years, fifteen not uh, fifteen million, seven point five on average. How do you feel? Uh so I think his projected salary there might be a little bit low. Um, yeah, I saw that too. I was confused. I was like, what? Yeah. I, We'll get to him, but John Feliciano actually has a higher projected cap hit. And Allegedly. I, I just I don't see that happening. Um, but Daryl Williams is, without a doubt, my priority um, free agent this year. Um, Me too. Especially if you're going with the projection of $9 million, say, whatever. Um, I think for how he played this past season... I kind of anticipated him pricing himself out of Buffalo. Uh, and then when you look into, you know, what other free agents are coming up and all that, you know, you're looking at some of these guys, 12, 15, 18 million dollars. Um, if you could get them somewhere around that 10 range, I mean, I think either this year or next year, you're set to pay Josh Allen about 40 million dollars a year. Your top priority has to be keeping him upright. And, you know, we'll get to it later. There's a lot of really talented um, rookie guards coming into the league. Mm -hmm. But I know what I got in Daryl Williams. To me, that's that's one of the most important positions. I got 
two two times I remember, and I don't remember who we were playing, but there was two different times where Josh Allen was doing his one of your uh, scratching your head sacks where he just kept going backwards and backwards, and mm. all of a sudden it's a 20-yard sack. Oh, and the ball came out, and the ball's Yikes. squirting around back there. Two different times I saw Daryl Williams hustle his butt back there and fall on top of that ball. Keep this PG. Uh, right. But, I mean, the difference that a hustle play like that makes in a game versus, you know, you took a 20-yard sack, at least you get to punt it and flip the field. Versus a 20-yard sack, now they got the ball and they're taking over in field goal range. It completely changes complexities of games. And you don't see everybody making plays like that. And that that kind of hustle out of a lineman, worth every penny to me. Right. I do remember those two games. If I'm not mistaken, it was the Rams and the Chiefs game. Believe so. Both big, big games. Let's move on to the center. Mitch Morse, PFF has him at 65.8. Is that good? Well, allegedly, Corey Lindsay of the Green Bay Packers is ranked at 86.4. Mitch Morse, injuries scare me with him. Concussions, concussions, concussions. I think he's got like six, six, seven documented ones. Even being Brandon Bean talked about it in his postseason interview, so the team is aware of of that issue. I wouldn't even say that's an issue; it's more of a situation. I don't get why people are calling for his head. You know who's going to replace him? I love Mitch Morris because he's so athletic and great in open space. I want personally, I want to restructure him. I think he's a good leader and brings a lot of that veteran veteran presence to the team. Justin, do you want to restructure, release, trade him? What do you want to do with Mitch Morris, and how do you feel about him? Um, as far as restructure, anything like I'm I'm all for whatever it takes to keep him on the team. If they you want to move some money around, whatever. Um, I think that this is a position where we should start planning for the future maybe use a draft pick here somewhere and start developing somebody in house. Um, but I, I have, I, I know the cap savings if you cut him is like 5 million. I have no interest in letting him walk. Um, you know, I've heard, you know, John Feliciano can play center too. And well, now you're opening up a, a hole at the guard spot. I don't think Feliciano gives you the same play at center, um, Mitch Morris is kind of underrated and, you know, helping Josh at the line of scrimmage diagnose, you know, who's, who's going where, um, who's picking up who on blocks, you know, all that kind of stuff that it, it's hard to see with the naked eye, but it, he's helping with all those calls and you're going to trans transition somebody else over. Now you got to, sp- I think it's better off to try to shore up the guard spots around him. And I also think that he kind of underperformed because I don't think we utilized his skill set. You know, you said Mm -hmm. he's very good in space. He's very athletic. And we asked him to kind of just go straight forward and take on these, you know, 350-pound one-techs all year. And that's not really his game. So I would like to see kind of a little bit of retooling in the run scheme and kind of use a little bit more of his athleticism, get him on the edge run some screen game, but start of 2021 season, I want Mitch Morris at my center. Yeah, I, I definitely want him on uh, on the team as well. And I think the Bills have the upper hand in terms of uh, restructuring his contract. So hopefully, well, maybe not hopefully, but you know, maybe the Bills approach him and get it done. Moving on, John Feliciano, PFF ranks him at 64.6. Is that good? Brandon Scherf of Washington got ranked 84.1. John Feliciano, as we all know, had a late start to the season. Thank God he came back because the the offensive line mentality in general just got so much better when he came back. He's got grit. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the man said after the NFL he wants to do MMA fighting. He 
He's got a little juice to him. He he, he wants he he's got that he's got that X factor. He want he looks for the danger. I love the KC fight uh, incident that I mentioned earlier with um, Deion Dawkins. He doesn't play around. If you mess with Josh Allen, he's coming after you. Now, he did get punched in the head <laughs> by Chris Jones. I didn't enjoy seeing that, but you know, of course, uh, you know what happened, and the refs did nothing about it. That's all I got to say about that. As you mentioned before, he can play center and guard, which is why some people are calling for Mitch Morris's head. I agree with you. If you do, you know, cut fully, uh, if you do sign Feliciano and trade or cut Mitch Morris, you just open another hole on guard, which the Bills could use some help with. He's a free agent. Do we resign him? Do we uh, do we sign the man? Uh, do we let him go? Spot Rex says four years, thirty-three point four million dollars, eight point three on average. Justin, let's hear your thoughts. Uh, so if it's eight point three, sorry, buddy, it's been fun, but yeah, eight point three is just unrealistic. Um, the money. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're talking between. If I have to choose between Daryl Williams and Feliciano, I I love Feliciano. All the things you said, he's got the juice to him. Um, I sent you guys pre-show the uh, the the video of Josh Allen celebrating every time he won a coin toss. Yeah. Every time he's celebrating winning that coin toss, he's going right to Feliciano. So he's another dude. He plays with the edge. Um, has I I love watching my players have fun playing football it just makes it so much more enjoyable and i love the guy um i saw you know something about how much he loves buffalo and seems like we might be able to get him back at a little bit of a discount so if you're talking you know maybe like four or five million dollars a year Mm -hmm. yeah if it goes up to the who's gonna get six yeah if it goes up to the 8.3 i I just don't think we can do it this year but yeah Another another guy I'd like to see back. Um, realistically, I'd like to, for the large part, be able to run this group back, make some additions, but... Mm-hmm. Well, you know, reinforcements might be on the way. Cody Ford is our next guy. Unfortunately, PFF ranked him at a 53.8, but Unf- he didn't play that much. Unfortunately unfortunately he got ranked at a 53.8 he didn't play too much so personally i don't i'm not going to take too much into that score injuries 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 are you seeing a theme here everyone with the line i i feel like i feel like something is coming up with the injuries um is he a tackle or is he a guard i don't really care where he is i personally would rather see him at guard at this point but I just want him to sit there, settle, learn the position. I, you know, I'm going to go back to my steak analogy. After you cook the steak, you got to let it rest and settle and get good. You can't, you just flipping around, like, leave it. Don't touch it. Leave Cody Ford in one spot. Let him get good. I have so much faith in this man. Some people are throwing around the bust word with him already. And it's, I don't think it's fair. It's not fair to him that he's been dealt with right tackle. Okay, go to guard. Oh wait, switch to other side on guard. Like it, it's it's a hard it's hard to go from college football to the NFL and then get asked to play three different positions. I think I think he's gonna get good, but I definitely believe it's way too soon to use the bus word, in my opinion. He got picked in the second for a reason, Justin. I think he'll blossom into something nice. How do you feel about Cody Ford? Um, so so I will say the the book is far from written on Cody Ford. Um, like you said, he's he's played guard, he's played tackle. Um, I loved him coming out of college. He's just the that kind of guy that's got the mean streak. Like he's looking to people put people on their backside. Um, that being said, he he has struggled with injuries. Um, you know, some of that, it, it's out of his control. There's nothing he can do. Um, but we do get, we got to see the guy in the field. It's kind of, you know, like the Matt Milano situation. 
if Matt Milano played every game the last two seasons and was healthy throughout, I don't really have a doubt that we'd find a way to make room for him right now. But at a certain point, the injuries do have to add up. Fortunately for Ford right now, he's still on a rookie deal. Um, so that, that'll that probably keep him around at least through that time frame. Um, I, I do still have faith that he'll develop. Um, I would like to see it at the guard spot, maybe him and uh, Botker competing. If um, end of year presser, Bean said that he'd be shocked if um, Cody Ford wasn't one of the five. If he's saying that with intentions of Cody Ford being the day one starter and they're letting Daryl Williams walk, I wouldn't lie. I'd, I'd have some concerns there if he was just trotted out as the starting right tackle next year, and that was the plan. Right. Uh, speaking of Ike Bakker, he's next. PFF ranked him at 65.3, so is that good? Joe Thune of the Pats, 74.2. Ike Bakker, cheap labor. Way better than someone that we're about to mention on this list, in my opinion. I didn't mind him. He was just there, you know. No news is good really, news, he, baby. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's a restricted free agent. Um, what, what are we gonna do with him? Uh, I, I don't know, Justin. What, what do you think? Uh, I, I'd like to see Bakker back. I, the first time I saw him come in the game, his first game was bad. Um, he kind of got better and better as the season went, and was just kind of a steady hand there. Um, he's not making any highlight reel plays, but. Like I said before, you're not trotting out five pro bowlers on every team in the NFL. If you if you have the right pieces around him, you get away with having somebody that's kind of just a passable starter. Um, I, like I said, I would like to see him and Cody Ford competing for that spot and maybe make Ford earn his way back in. Um, but I think Bodker kind of did enough that that job is his to lose right now as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, by by season's end, I don't really have much to complain about about Bakker. Could be better at times. Definitely surprised me for how well he played. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I remember like two seasons ago when the preseason game was going on and we had Wyatt Teller on the team. They elected to put Bakker in over Wyatt Teller. So the team trusts or sees something in Bakker that we don't, but we digress. Moving on to the person that he supplanted, Brian Winters. PFF had him at a 54.6. I, I, I don't like Brian Winters. No offense, Brian. I just don't want you on my team. I have never seen someone get blown off a ball quite like this man. And I can't do any better, so I I know it's easy for me to say this from the comfort of my room, but I just don't want you on my team. And it's not for you as a person, but it's just for your skill on the field. <laughs> Justin, do we resign, let the man walk? What do we do with him? Uh, we keep him around. I got a job for him. Oh, yeah? What's that? Yeah, he loves letting people in so much. We put him right at the front gate, the Bill Stadium, and, yeah. and he can just let people in. The turnstile? Yep, the okay. turnstile, until we're at capacity. Um, all right. I, again, all the things you said, nothing personal against the guy, never met him, but boy, do I not want to see him in the football game. Yeah, seems like a cool guy. The team likes him, but uh, yeah. Anyways, why. yeah, let's talk to about the next guy, Ty Seki. He's the backup swing tackle. I love him for that role. He's 35 years old, so he's kind of getting up there, if not already up there. Um, free agent, re-sign him. Do we let him walk? What do you want to do, Justin? Uh, I, so he looked good in, what was it, two years ago, and kind of the the rotation he had with Cody Ford. I, I really liked him and his, and his filling in and spot starting. Um, I think he's somebody that you let walk at this point. He's, what, 35 years old. Um, I think that's a spot where I'm either bringing in a lower-end free agent for that spot, uh, maybe at the same time drafting somebody in the later rounds that's like a developmental-type player. Um, I think 
Bean is probably going to do something similar to the Daryl Williams situation here where he um, lets everybody else kind of go spend money in free agency on these big name tackles and then he'll kind of see what offensive linemen shake out from there. Maybe get another Daryl Williams type contract of is he 2.25 million? Damn near a pro bowler. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's go on to the next person, Jeremiah Searles. Oh, wait. No, it's it's his son, Ryan Bates. He's basically the same guy except younger. He plays all five positions, um, which is super impressive. I think that he could do better than Jeremiah Searles. He's cheaper. He was an undrafted free agent. I think he's on the roster no matter what, and I think he did a very good job when he got asked to be put in. Not ideal, but just a quick band-aid. Like, flex tape seal. The meme. Any little hole? Ryan Bates. Ryan Bates. <laughs> Justin, how do you feel about him? Yeah, I, I don't mind him around as a depth, depth piece. Um, I'm always kind of leery of somebody that's he can play all five positions. I'd rather have a guy that can play like one or two positions and do it great. Um, but like as far as a roster spot goes, if if you have one guy that can be serviceable um, and a pinch, sure. Um, like you said, he's he's going to be around next year. So hopefully he develops a little bit. Maybe he can uh, contribute a little bit more. But he, he's not a guy I have a problem with being around. All right, these last two guys, Jordan Devy and Trey Adams. Uh, Jordan Devy, I don't really know much about you. You're signed to a futures contract, so that's, the Bills must have some type of confidence in you that I don't know of. So that's cool. Good job. Trey Adams, I guess, you know, again, if injuries weren't a thing, you would have been a really high draft pick, which is quite unfortunate because I've seen the man statement. He, he does look good. Um, I hope you get healthy, and I hope that it pans out and you can earn a spot on this team as a reasonable backup or you know potential starter if it works shakes out. How do you feel about these two, Justin? Uh, kind of same boat as you. I don't know a ton about both of them. I know Trey Adams was projected to be a very high draft pick, um, battled injuries, so he's kind of a low-risk, high reward to keep around. He's not costing us much. Um, maybe he'll develop. Um, I think Jordan Devy has some sort of future with the team. Um, he was, I'm pretty sure it was every game of the season, he was a protected practice squad player. Um, so it's a guy they really didn't want to let out of the building. Um, so there's mm -hmm. got to be some degree of trust that they have with him. Um, those two are kind of the situation where with the limited off-season um access last year i don't really get to see or hear too much about them so kind of got to trust the building that they think they have something in those guys on the tail end of the roster all right well uh i guess that does it for our offensive line room here at one bills drive we're going to take a quick break and we'll get right back <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We're going to finish out this episode. We're going to talk about some free agents, draft prospects, and uh, wrap everything up. So free agents, we have, you know, Pro Football Network's top 10. Justin, you love this game. You know I know how to play it. I'm going to give you the top 10 free available off, uh, offensive line players in 2021. We already know the number one person here isn't available, so Brandon Sheriffy got franchise tagged by the Washington football team. Almost so we'll just... as we went live today. Yeah, so we'll we'll just skip right over that guy. We'll give you the top nine. We'll do you one better, or I guess one worse. <laughs> um, at this point, I feel like we're window shopping, but it's still fun to go through these players. Maybe we'll be able to get one. So, as I mentioned before, number one is off the board. Brandon Sheriff, he got franchise tagged by the Washington football team. That's not possible. Number two, Justin Joe Thune of the New England Patriots. Do you want him here? Do you not? I feel like I'm going to have a lot of the same answers here. I would love him if I could get him for a reasonable cost, but he's about to get yeah. paid. I personally would love to have him on here just to steal him from the Patriots. That's how like spiteful I am as a person towards that team. Um, Trent Williams, the outstanding left tackle that uh, from San Francisco, 
that I told you was ranked number one. Do you want him on here? But he he's pretty much only a left tackle, or well, Deion Dawkins is only a left tackle. So if you put him there, do you where do you put Deion? Do you want him here? I mean, do you want to mess up that? Did you happen to look at his projected contract on uh, spot right there? Tell me. I I know it's it's got to be. I want to say it's like twelve. At oh, least. leave guarantees out. Uh, average annual value projected eighteen million. Oh my God! So uh, I'm gonna say no, thank you to that. All right, Corey Lindsay, the center for the Green Bay Packers. No need. I got Mitch Morris. Alex Mack, Atlanta Falcons. No, thank you. Russell Kung, oh Kung, sorry, Carolina, Carolina Panthers, not Carolina Panthers. <laughs> See the reverse thing I did there? I saw what you did there. Uh, I would love him if he came cheaper than Daryl Williams. So probably a no for me. You know, I, I imagine that Russell, um, I'm sorry. I imagine that Brandon Beaton woke up and just looked at his spreadsheet and was like, Carolina Panthers, Russell Okun. Must have. Available in 2021. Somebody get this man now. Right? Let's make some that's, cuts. That's how I imagine it goes on. Um. Cameron Fleming of New uh, the New York Giants. No, thank you. Alejandro Villanueva of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I would love him too. He's I kind of like him. I think he's projected like fifteen million though. I know we're so window shopping, but I just like come on, everyone. Come yeah, this on. is like, <laughs> I I kind of played the game with the with the top free agents, um, mm-hmm. because I I would love to upgrade two, three positions on the offensive line. Um, but where where we're at with salary cap... It's just not possible. Even with Daryl Williams getting his getting a significant raise, I still think he's probably going to be the most cost-effective answer there. And he's already in the building. He already knows the guys, the system. Mm-hmm. Pull him in around nine, ten million. Right. That's That's also kind of why I slapped the priority on him. Um, Mm -hmm. you can find a serviceable linebacker to replace Milano. Maybe not play at the same level. Um, Right tackles are hard to find in the game for cheap. It's a hard position to replace. Yeah, and the Bills have seemingly had a problem with finding that position. Uh, We got the left side, but we can't get the right side. All right, number nine, Lane Taylor, Green Bay Packers. No, thank you. And then number 10, Cameron Irving, Dallas Cowboys. I'm, I'm interested if we can get the right price. Uh, right. I think this is a position that if, if we do anything in free agency, it's going to be more of a more of the backup swing tackle yeah. kind of player. Day two kind of yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and I think it's really important for uh, us – as podcasters to let you know as the viewers that we we're not you know we we don't dislike the offensive line completely we don't even dislike them at all really uh it's just you know if you can upgrade i see that's what we think the bills are going to do and uh, one way to do that is through the draft and that's what we're going to transition to right now i i'm not a big person in terms of draft draft prospects but I will tell you, when I watched the Senior Bowl highlights, and one player that stood out to me in terms of the offensive line was Quinn Mirnirez. I'm I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but I just want this man at some point. I don't know where the value spot would be, but I want him. He, As I just mentioned, he showed out at the Senior Bowl. He's a D3 guy out of Wisconsin Whitewater. And I think at the start of like one of his highlight tapes that I watched... You just see him pick up, like, this giant, like, air, like, tank just running down the docks and just throwing him into the water, doing offensive, offensive, you know, you're going to have to edit this part out. Sorry, Jake. Do it. You just see him doing, you just, sorry, you, you just see him doing some offensive training on a tree destroying the barks off the off this thing obliterating it i i want this guy justin i know you have some draft prospects to tell the people about 
let let us know who you who we should have an eye on. Yeah, so I will say uh, I also don't know how to pronounce his name, but I had not heard of him until you told me to take a look at him. Um, I've been doing some mock drafting um, with a couple websites out there. If you guys are listening and you've never played with a mock draft, just do it. It's fun. Um, I see him going in about the third, fourth round. Um, so definitely somebody that you could add as like a day two value, day three value there. Um, I'm looking more towards the high end players here. Um, first of all, I'm a big fan of the idea of trading back. If you have any trading partners at pick 30, um, Mm -hmm. I think the state we're in as an organization, um, you kind of have the core pieces in place. They're starting to get paydays. Uh, you got Josh Allen coming up, which is going to be a monster contract to deal with. Um, I think you need to be reloading. Um, when you start spending that money, it's going to make free agency really difficult going forward. Uh, so I think you need to rebuild the team on the fly through draft picks. And the draft, as we have all seen, People can be as sure as you think they're going to be. It's still kind of a crapshoot. So I think your best move there is to accumulate as much draft cap as uh, possible. Um, If you're staying in the 30 round, um, my my top two guys that I love, um, Alex Leatherwood, dude is 6'6", 322. Um, He kind of gets a, a grade as more of a pass blocker than a run blocker. Um, so I know we have a lot of issues with our run protections and whatnot, but the team kind of said screwed on that last year. And I'm like, if we can't run the ball, we're just going to throw it 40, 50 times a game. So yeah, that didn't work out for them at all. right? Yeah. It was terrible, terrible to watch. Yeah, just, they probably scored like 100 points all season yeah, or something. And it was unwatchable. <laughs> yeah. God. Um, so again, this is also kind of difficult to project right now because we don't know are we going to be replacing Feliciano are we going to be replacing Williams we don't really know what holes we're going to be looking to fill until we get through free agency Um, but something I like about him and the next guy uh, Jalen Mayfield out of Michigan Um, they both have played guard at some point in their career Um, a little leery with that too because that was kind of cody ford's scouting report you know he can play tackle he can play guard i think that this front office really likes versatility in their players and they really want to get the talent on the field and then address who their best five are going to be um so i think kind of regardless of what happens in free agency uh they could both be some good fits for multiple spots on the line Uh, And then I got Wyatt Davis, guard out of Ohio State. He's one of them nasty players. Um, I think he could step right in, be a day one starter if Feliciano's gone. Um, These are kind of, I'm just kind of looking at the top end of the draft right now. I think if you're picking at 30 or if you kind of trade back a little bit, I think the top priority kind of needs to be uh, investing in keeping Josh Allen clean doubling down on offense and you know kind of filling the holes around there as you can um but this offense goes as josh allen goes so the the better you can keep him clean the better you're going to be playing as an offense right anyone else you got for us uh i will have more as we're going to be doing a combine um (laughs) mock draft episode coming up um right So I kind of want to get into free agency a little bit and kind of zero in on fits and things like that as we see what kind of shakes out down the line. So a little bit of a teaser for an episode we're going to do a few weeks down the line, Um, kind of look a little bit more in depth at some draft prospects, fits for the Bills, um, what that all might look like. Right. Well, uh, perfect transition, Justin. So next episode, we're going to talk everything uh, that we know about the tight ends and special teamers. By then, the cap should be kind of figured out. So if not, we'll just play it by ear. Uh, You Come join the show if you want to be a part of it. Uh, We have a pretty good interview set up for next week. 
Uh, you can search us at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast on most social media media platforms, or you can give us an email at the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Um, as Justin alluded to you earlier, we do have a very uh, fun fun uh, episode coming up. We call it the Average Joe's Combine, presented by the Wandering Buffalo Podcast podcast where us average joes give you average results <laughs> Very uh, average. make sure to subscribe right make sure to subscribe rate and uh, leave a comment and or review it'd be greatly appreciated justin where can the people find you uh, you can find me on social medias at jgods22 thank you for tuning in and hopefully we hear from you guys yeah and you can find me on twitter and instagram at two changs and uh until then we'll uh talk to you all then go bills, go bills.